In nature, things are not always as they first appear. Various forms of deception are employed by many different species to several different ends. Sometimes, it is a simple matter of camouflage, as a creature conceals itself from nearby predators. On other occasions, it may be the predator that is hiding, waiting for an opportune moment to strike. There are a number of forms of this so-called aggressive mimicry, though there are a few common points. In each case, a predator is pretending to be something that it is not. The purpose is generally the capture and subdual of prey with greater ease and success. Within these basic parameters, there is considerable variation. Indeed, there is so much variation that it would be all but impossible to produce an exhaustive list. So, for today at least, let us focus on just one single type of predator, the assassin bugs of the family Reduviidae. The Reduviids are a group of so-called true bugs. This may require a brief explanation. Speaking casually, a bug may refer to almost anything that is small, has a multitude of legs, and tends to crunch when stepped upon. When speaking more technically, a bug is a specific type of insect distinguished by a few basic traits. The metamorphosis in a bug is incomplete, lacking a pupil stage. Nymphs simply grow in size with each molt, developing external wing pads until the final molt into adulthood. The front pair of adult wings tend to be subdivided into a leathery portion near the base and a more membranous portion towards the tip. This wing structure forms the basis of the scientific name of the order Heteroptera. Roughly translated, the name means different wings, referring to the divide in the wing structure. More significantly for our purposes today, the mouthparts of these so-called true bugs are modified to pierce various tissues and extract fluids as a food source. These mouthparts consist of a slender, hollow needle composed of four stylets, each of which is modified from either one of the paired mandibles or the paired maxillae found in other insect groups. The maxillary stylets lock together to form a canal for extracting food and another, sometimes smaller, canal for injecting saliva. They are flanked on either side by the mandibular stylets, which aid in piercing the tissues of plants or animals to obtain the fluids inside. This small, relatively delicate needle is enclosed in a protective segmented sheath, which is itself made up of other modified mouthparts. The labium, or lower lip, makes up most of this sheath, while the labrum, or upper lip, comprises a relatively small portion towards the front. The entire elongated structure is sometimes known as a rostrum, or more casually called a beak. It tends to be tucked away beneath the insect body, extending backward from the head. It is typically brought forward during feeding, though it may also be used to deliver a defensive bite. In the Reduviids, the salivary glands produce a series of toxins and digestive enzymes. When these bugs bite their prey, they inject this corrosive cocktail into the body. Most often, the initial result is paralysis, or at least a sufficient loss of neural function to render the prey entirely helpless. Over a span of several minutes, the prey's tissues are digested and liquefied, and then extracted. One rather venerable entomologist sometimes referred to this grisly meal as cold soup. Accurate enough, if perhaps a bit macabre. In any case, when the Reduviid is finished, all that remains of the prey is a shriveled, desiccated husk. The largest known species of assassin bug is Cytala horrida. It is a monstrous black bug with red markings, growing to nearly two inches in length. In addition to being able to deliver a bite more painful than a typical bee sting, this creature can spit venom as a defensive measure. A similar species of assassin bug, only slightly smaller, is Platymerus bigotatus. This species is recognizable by a pair of white spots on its back, and it has been studied in laboratory settings for a number of years now. While these rather large, cantankerous examples of predatory bug are impressive enough, they are not particularly subtle or sneaky. To find suitable examples of aggressive mimicry, 
we must turn to other species in this rather bloodthirsty family. A reasonable starting point might be the jagged ambush bug, Phymata americana. This species is most commonly found on flowers. Between the coloration and the somewhat irregular body outline, these bugs blend in with reasonable success. In fact, there is a considerable variation in color within the species, which appears to be connected to whatever flowers they happen to be inhabiting. Such variation makes classification something of a headache for the casual entomologist. While it is common for assassin bugs to use their front legs to grasp their prey, the ambush bugs have taken this a step further. The front legs are modified into grasping claws, reminiscent of those one might find on a praying mantis. Between these raptorial limbs and the venomous bite, the ambush bugs are capable of bringing down prey insects several times their own size. While these creatures are formidable enough as predators, their camouflage is relatively basic. It serves them well enough, but there are far stranger forms of camouflage and mimicry to be found among the assassin bugs. One striking example is seen in the species Stenolemus bituberus. This is a species of thread-legged bug, and like the ambush bugs, this group of insects has four legs that have been modified into grasping claws. Apart from this feature, they look rather different. As might be inferred from the name, the thread-legged bugs are very slender creatures with long, thin legs. To return to Stenolemus, this gaunt little specter spends most of its life in various spider webs. A dangerous neighborhood for a typical insect, but this creature is not at all typical. Like many other assassin bugs, this species will sometimes slowly creep up on its prey before delivering its lethal bite. Unlike most others, it sometimes lures the prey in. To do this, it need only pluck the strands of the spider's silken web in a particular manner, simulating the helpless struggling of a captured insect. The spider approaches to investigate, quite unaware of what awaits it. The long limbs and slender form of the Stenolemus afford it a considerable reach for its size, and the combination of raptorial claws and a venomous bite make short work of the spider. Thus, the hunter becomes prey, and the trapper is itself ensnared. Other assassin bugs employ forms of mimicry that are somewhat more tangible than a feigned performance. A relatively well-known species is Reguvius personatus, commonly called the Masked Hunter. As an adult, this particular bug is a fairly average-looking Reguvid, gaunt and predatory with a dark, somewhat glossy aesthetic. In contrast, the nymphal stages are quite unusual. These nymphs exude a sticky substance that covers most of their exoskeleton. Because of this sticky exudate, things tend to adhere to the nymph. As a result, the nymphs gather a covering of whatever dust and detritus they happen to encounter. This mask serves as a visual concealment and may provide at least some degree of olfactory camouflage as well. An effective strategy for taking small prey unawares, though it can be a bit unnerving to see a seemingly harmless dust bunny effectively sprout legs and antennae and start clambering about. Despite their painful bite, the masked hunters are sometimes encouraged to live in dwellings, as they feed upon cockroaches and bedbugs. This is a valuable enough service to allow for a few animated clumps of detritus wandering the darker corners of the room. A more grisly variant of this masking strategy is seen in the genus Acanthaspis. Once more, the adults are relatively mundane, while the nymphs engage in this strange camouflage. However, instead of mere detritus, Many of the species in this genus selectively adorn themselves with the drained corpses of their previous meals. This is especially so if the desiccated husks happen to be erstwhile ants. Thus, the Acanthaspis nymph trundles about its world beneath a heap of dried ant corpses. There are a number of theories as to the purpose of such gruesome trophies. It is possible that a random assemblage of former insects serves to break up the outline of the nymph, hiding it from predators that rely upon visual cues. There is also the possibility that such a creature might be mistaken for a cluster of ants, which some predators are unlikely to risk disturbing. There is even a chance that this serves as an olfactory disguise, allowing the creature to feed upon ants more easily by masquerading as an aggregation of nestmates. This seems less likely, though, as ants tend to attack members of the same species from different colonies, 
based upon only minor differences in overall scent. That, and the post-mortem processes of decay would certainly alter the scent of such adornments. There is one group of assassin bugs that has perfected the deception of ants, luring them in with almost troubling success. This group is commonly known as the feather-legged bugs, with the subfamily name of holoptilini. Roughly translated, the name means complete feather. These particular bugs are somewhat absurd to look at, as the femurs on their hind legs are almost ridiculously fuzzy. This absurdity is amplified in some species by antennae that are similarly covered with fine hairs. One might not expect such a creature to be a highly specialized and effective predator, but such is the case. There appear to be two main tactics employed by these particular assassin bugs. One is relatively simple and involves waving their hind legs about to lure in nearby ants. The absurdly dense covering of hairs serves as a sort of armor, protecting the leg as the ant bites down and attempts a reflexive sting. Unfortunately for the ant, this attack leaves it open for the bug to draw out its beak and pierce the relatively thin exoskeleton just behind the ant's head. The second tactic is decidedly more devious, and even nefarious by some measures. The species that employ this tactic produce a different sort of lure. On the underside of the abdomen, towards the front, the bug possesses a tuft of hairs supplied by rather distinctive and unusual glands. These glands produce a blend of chemicals that the ants find highly attractive. When an ant approaches, drawn in by the enticing scent, the bug will slowly raise itself up to expose its underside. Rather than attacking, the ant typically begins to lick at the tuft of hairs laden with the intoxicating brew. Very slowly, the bug will wrap its legs around the ant and extend its mouth parts. Soon, the ant begins to feel the effects of the bug's secretion as it becomes effectively paralyzed. Then, when the ant is altogether helpless and incapable of moving, much less fighting, the bug brings the macabre act to its close. The beak finds its way behind the ant's head, and the stylets pierce the thin exoskeleton to inject the lethal venom. As the ant's insides slowly liquefy, the little assassin feeds at its leisure, enjoying the cold soup of its drugged victim. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have enjoyed today's little foray into the unknown. If you are still curious and wish to venture a little further, here are a few things you might consider looking into. If you found this video enjoyable, do feel free to leave a like. If you believe others might enjoy it, by all means, share. If you wish to see more of this channel, a subscription should prove quite helpful. Until next time.